recently photographed a galaxy in the night sky using my camera and telescope using a new approach I've never done before. Not only did it produce one of my favorite images I've ever captured, but it revealed a new type of astrophotography to me. The idea of capturing a nebula outside of our own Milky Way galaxy. And not just a nebula either, multiple nebulae, star clusters, variable stars. These are not deep sky objects in our sky, but in someone else's sky. I still can't completely wrap my head around that. Now that I have a taste for this incredibly fascinating idea, I plan to put it in motion with an even bigger telescope to really push the limits of intergalactic nebula photography. This is how I took a picture of a nebula in another galaxy. So every year in November, Ashley and I try to get out for a company retreat, even though it's just two of us at Astro Backyard. During the day, we discuss strategies for future content ideas, and at night, we set up our telescopes for some deep sky astrophotography. This year, we rented a cabin about three hours north of us that sat on about 40 acres of land under a beautiful Bortle III class sky. When we book these trips, of course, we never know if it's actually gonna be clear while we're there, so we were pleasantly surprised to see a little gap in the cloud cover for the week that we were staying there. So with our astrophotography gear in the trunk and Rudy in the back seat, we set off for our destination first thing in the morning. I didn't really know which deep sky object I wanted to capture while we were there, but I had a few ideas in mind. Scopes are all set up in our uh, chosen spot for now. We didn't really know where we were gonna set up. You never know when you get to a new spot, but this is south over here, looking over the cottage. This is north. I was able to see the North Star very briefly last night, so we're kind of roughly pointed north. But the reason we set up so far back in the property over here, away from the cottage, is just to get that lower horizon line. The farther back we get, the more of that we're gonna see. So hopefully this is gonna work out okay, but I mean, those are some tall trees all around us. I decided to shoot the Triangulum Galaxy M33 due to its high position in the sky this time of year. Now this is a great target to shoot under a Bortle Scale Class 3 sky. We even used the Uranus Meteo sensor to test the SQM of the sky, and it was really, really good. Dense trees separated the property from the neighbors next door, and in the back it opened up to miles and miles of untouched forest. Night two of our three night stay was the first clear night and I finally got to experience the intense darkness of this location. In fact, it was dark enough to feel a little unsettled with that open forest behind me. I wanna shoot the flaming star, but did you let him out? Oh yeah. my God. What? It scared me. Hey buddy, over here. You gotta stay where we can see it. If it's anything like last night, you'll hear the coyotes howling very soon. This place is crawling with them. Oh, baby. Oh my goodness. How is there that much dust on your scope? Consider this a PSA for why you need to take flat frames. <laughs> Yikes. The sky was more than dark enough to justify shooting without the use of any light pollution filters. In situations like this, I tend to focus on capturing broadband targets like galaxies, reflection nebulae, and dark nebulae. These types of targets are impossible to capture effectively from home, so I like to take advantage of the surroundings when I can. To keep things easy and portable, I brought along the ZWO AM5 strain wave drive mount and the Starfield Gear 115 refractor telescope. This system has served me well for a few months now, and I'm really impressed with the optics of that affordable Gear 115. The native focal length of this telescope is 805 millimeters at F7, but I like to use the dedicated 0.8 times reducer to bring it down to 644. This brings my F ratio down to a speedy F5.6, and the telescope is really manageable. It's only about 15 pounds, not a problem for the AM5. I attached my ZWO ASI 2600mm Pro monochrome astronomy camera to the back of the reducer using the correct spacing. And in front of that was a seven position filter wheel with some chroma LRGB filters in there. This APS-C sized sensor camera is now officially my most used astrophotography camera of all time. The one thing we kind of were ready for was having to use our portable battery power. We plug into the house whenever we can. 
we actually uh, plugged in the extension cords to see if we could get all the way out here. And even with three of them, we couldn't make it. So battery pack it is. This should be enough for two rigs all night long. Messier 33, the Triangulum Galaxy, is an extremely popular deep sky target for this time of year. It rises high into the eastern sky after dusk, making it the perfect time to start your project on it. It's a stunning spiral galaxy in the constellation Triangulum with beautiful, cool colors and an intricate spiral system. This galaxy lies about 3 million light years from Earth, and it's believed to be a satellite galaxy of the Andromeda Galaxy. I've photographed M33 many times before, but I have some new strategies to make sure that this version is my best ever. What makes this galaxy so special? Well, aside from being one of the absolute largest galaxies in the entire night sky to shoot, it contains many dynamic H2 hydrogen regions within it. These are nebulae in another galaxy so huge that they are actually cataloged deep sky objects. I found an incredible resource by Leonardo Arazi online where he identifies all of these deep sky objects within M33 and provides some interesting information about them. This was so cool. There are many catalog deep sky objects within M33, including NGC 604, which I kind of think looks like the Lagoon Nebula. This object is 40 times bigger than the Orion Nebula and over 6,000 times more luminous. Just doing some reading on it, it would be as bright as Venus in the sky if it were in our sky. There were some intermittent high clouds during my imaging session, so I had to ditch about 30% of the frames captured at our cabin. It was over two nights, and I ended up getting about four hours in total, about an hour through each filter on the Triangulum Galaxy. However, when I got home, I pointed my telescope the same system at the galaxy again. This time I used a narrowband H alpha filter to isolate those H2 regions in the galaxy. This is a really cool shot. So the idea is to combine this narrowband data with the RGB broadband image to create an HA LRGB image. This is not something new, a lot of people do this, but I've never taken the time to do it myself on a galaxy, and I am so glad that I did. Here are some early stage looks at the galaxy during my image processing session. So you can see it here in beautiful RGB broadband light. It looks so beautiful. But if I break it down by the channels, you can see this is what I captured through the red filter. Here's the green and here's the blue. You'll notice that some channels are noisier than others and there's different information contained in each one. So this is the RGB image here. So the natural broadband light. And then you can see my luminance channel, which contains basically the all light at once and the really important details on this galaxy. It's a really beautiful stack here, the luminance. I just love it. And even more exciting than that is the hydrogen alpha narrowband image. This is, this is the key to the whole thing. This is what separates this image uh, from one that I've done before is applying this narrowband H alpha data to the image. So these are all the nebulae within the M33 galaxy. It's just incredible to see this. You can kind of tell that it's still a spiral galaxy here, but these are just the DSOs in the sky. So if I kind of tone down this layer here, you can see that they coincide with those beautiful pink nebulae in the galaxy. And it's just a matter of applying those details uh, carefully into the image to you know, reveal those objects even more, but still retain that natural look. I thought it was really cool to see that. Yeah, so I, I'm i a big Dob guy. I've got a 28 inch Dob. So visuals, my, my personal love, but I always like going after those little tiny off the beaten path. So I love stuff that hides in plain sight um, just because it gets overlooked. Yeah, well, and how exciting is it for someone to go back to their image and realize that they've captured it? They just hadn't identified it yet. Right? Yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff like that. So I think the ones within the galaxies are really, those are really easy yeah. um, to go after. But as you've kind of seen, you, you kind of open up that door and you start to realize hey, there's a bunch of other stuff. Robert Gendler, who's an amazing astrophotographer, um, he's the one that got me turned on to globulars and Andromeda. And he has a, a one gigabyte image with a 20 inch RC mosaic. And he has all of them mapped. If you wanna see the globulars of M31, it's pretty insane. I kind of take it as 
a deep sky observer's perspective on imaging. I wouldn't be surprised if we have this big surge of wide angle stuff and then you have this new generation such as yourself is going into where it's like, okay, I shot wide field, but what if I got this longer focal length telescope and what if I blew it up a little bit more and how do I do that? And then you really quickly find out the limitations of a lot of equipment nowadays. So as you can see, not only did I photograph a nebula in another galaxy, but an entire system of nebulae in a distant night sky. Imagine a world located in the Triangulum Galaxy, looking up into the night sky and spotting a distant Milky Way galaxy. And maybe a few of our brightest nebulae can be spotted from that distance. Just mind blowing. Long story short, I'm excited to try photographing the bright nebulae in M33 and other galaxies using a larger telescope. Intergalactic astrophotography. That has a nice ring to it. Oh, and it wouldn't be an astro backyard video if there wasn't a dirty reveal montage at the end. <laughs>